Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy Aries from Aries Game Productions and today I want to do a little bit of a review that I don't know why we haven't actually done this review before but uh, this review is basically just going to be about Type 2 is uh, a game that was released back in I think it was 2016 by Respawn and uh, Respawn actually was a lot of people don't know this. A lot of the guys that made uh, Modern Warfare uh, 1 and I think Modern Warfare 2 uh, were some of the guys after they left uh, Activision and Infinity War were uh, the same guys that ended up making the Titanfall series. So uh, so just a, a kind of a background. Titanfall 1 I think did kind of good but I think a lot of people, this was back in the day where um, a lot of the shooters were just trying to be uh, online and they didn't have any like single player content or anything like that so essentially what they did was uh, basically say um, okay well if uh, since you guys you know don't like that what do you want and so they listened to the community and basically uh, said you know we want a uh, we want a good solid single player and a uh, but still you know keep the multiplayer because a lot of people I think still like the multiplayer aspect of it so uh, but the game has both uh, the game actually has uh, the uh, ability to carry a good single player and also has the ability to uh, keep you engaged in a multiplayer now I'll be the first to go ahead and admit I'm hot trash at like most shooters I'm hot trash at. I complete utter garbage. Um, especially for multiplayer online. I'm not esports league, you know, quality uh, shooter player. Most of my stuff, I like think I can carry like some of my white fighting games because that's what I grew up playing. But I also grew up playing kind of the old, the modern warfare games and like Halo and stuff like that. So it's not like I don't know how to play them. It's just I don't know how to play it very well um, against the people. So, um, but anyway, um, but just to review, so the story, how is the story? The story is actually really uh, good and engaging. Um, so it revolves around a guy named Jack Cooper. He's a rifleman in the uh, militia, in the resistance militia group, fighting against the IMC. Who are basically the empire of this universe, and uh, so he's a starts off as a rifleman, gets trained by a guy who's a pilot with a Titan. His uh, Titan is a Vanguard class Titan, uh, BT seven two seven four, and I think those are the numbers. I think that's his numbers. But uh, so they basically um, kind of get into an estranged uh, partnership. Uh, after uh, the beginning of the, the game where the original pilot for BT dies you take over as the new pilot for the Titan and really neat uh, the relationship between Jack and BT is awesome it almost feels like kind of like a uh, almost from a sur I need you to survive to you know hey they're like joking around by like the, the second or third mission together so you feel like they're like, you know, they automatically kind of get thrown into it together, um, so to speak. But uh, you have some interesting boss fights. Uh, the Apex uh, Predators, they're the same guys that Apex Legends is uh, named after. It's the same group. Like apparently the guy who runs the Apex, uh, uh, the Apex Predators is the same guy, I think, that runs the Apex Legends tournament or whatever it is. So... And Respawn also does that game too. Um, but which is pretty neat. So they actually connect the universes, which is really cool about the guys at Respawn. They try to like connect things as much as possible. Or apparently, or so they so it appears. So they're actually doing a pretty cool job about that. But the interesting thing was that uh, after uh, or after this, um, after this game, that they ended up going to do that. So most of the team that actually worked on this game is actually the team that is also doing Apex Legends now. Probably why it's one of the best things EA has probably ever done. It's just They just keep having these guys from Respawn like do all their work for them and create these 
masterpiece games that people are going to and spending money on. Um, so, uh, but the story, um, very, I mean, you know, there's one particular mission I think everybody kind of talks about, but, um, but if you haven't played the game, you should. I'm not going to spoil that mission for you because I really think that people should. It's called Cause, or Effect and Cause, and it's, uh, fantastically designed mission um, they basically had to layer two maps on top of each other uh, from what the developers were saying so you can tell how much you know time they actually spent developing the game and single player content everything along those lines so it's actually really neat when you think about it and when you think about all the time that somebody like respawn will spend on on a game then compare that to like maybe Activision for like past couple of years. They've just been shitting out Call of Duty games. Which is kind of sad because you can tell the guys that you know were in charge of the storytelling for Activision whenever they were doing Modern Warfare you can just really tell that these guys were like the the actual people behind you know, the success that these companies were making. Once these people left, I mean, they're, like, I mean, they just, like, everything was kind of shit after that. It really was. Everything really sucked. <laughs> so, I actually do like how you can tell when certain people leave a company or a certain, you know, developers leave a company, how it just automatically changes the quality of what they're doing in that studio. It, like, it immediately changes it. So that's what's actually really impressive to me. Um, but, uh, you know, Respawn deserves to be committed with a spectacular, absolutely spectacular uh, job that they did with the campaign. It's engaging, like I said. Uh, you know, uh, difficulty... I think I first completed it on the very easiest, then I went to normal. Then I tried it, I think, at the nightmare mode, or the hardest mode. And I think I rage quit, because it was, like, so... It's ridiculously hard on, on the hardest level. It's super fucking hard. Like, you, people, things just kill you instantly, it feels like. Like, you, you just you feel like you and your Titan just die. And there, there's, like, there's literally no help for you. Um... Well, BT is actually a little bit tankier, so, like, you don't feel like you die as much as you should when you're the Titan. But when you play as Jack, like, it just feels like any, like, s somebody sneezes on you and they kill you instantly. It, it really does. So, uh, so after talking about the single player, yes, the single player is awesome. Uh, don't want to diminish it, but I know a lot of people, the reason why they play Titanfall is because of the multiplayer and how good the multiplayer is. So, um, since we're here at the screen, so you know, of course, you can play on your own network, invite your friends to your to games that you have. Um, so you can actually go right here. You have your different modes: uh, attrition and uh, what was it? I think it was attrition and I think bounty hunt is what they said. Where they are the most fun. Um, all the other kind of other modes are just kind of there as like staples, like you have pilots versus pilots, AV8. I think it's the highest you go to in the entire game is AV8. Um, so, and then of course you have a, something that I don't know why people have, I don't know why they did this. I guess Glitch is just a really cool and popular map, but that just searches for every like Capture the Flag, Amp Tar Point, Pilot versus Pilot Warfare, and Last Titan Standing on Glitch. I guess people just really fucking love Glitch. I, I don't understand it, but... Glitch is a really fun map. All, all the maps are fun in this game. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're, they're all fucking amazing to play on. And they have... They're designed so well, too, to where it makes you feel like your pilot is, like, super fast. You, you really don't ever feel like... The game does a good job of making you feel like you're never slow. Um, I love Super Smash Bros. Melee. I never feel slow in that game, except when I'm fucking playing Bowser, but who doesn't? But... That game makes you feel like you're moving at just, like, supersonic speeds. This game actually makes you feel the same way. And 
it's very hard for me to play other shooters um, without giving me kind of the movement that I need, giving me something fast. So, for example, um, I've been also having a stream for Doom, which we're going to keep doing that this uh, this week. Uh, so after my week calms down, we're probably going to be chilling out with some Doom uh, because I need to get back and probably finish that before Eternal comes out. Doom Eternal is going to be, I think, it's going to be pretty good. Um, will it be as good as the original? I don't know, but Doom 2016 is the bee's knees. We're going to finish it uh, on the channel. But um, but Doom and this game are like the very first shooters where I actually felt like I was really in control of the movement and I could choose where I wanted to go and the combat is very fast, it's energetic, all that sort of stuff. Bounty Hunt and Trish and I think are the best modes because they actually make you feel like you're part of a fight. They actually have AI like uh, Grunts, Stalkers, uh, and Reapers are there too. With, you know, of course, with the other people who are playing the game too, with your uh, enemy pilots and their enemy titans that they can drop in, which is really cool. So you do feel like you're part of, like, a futuristic war. More so than you would maybe in, let's say, Call of Duty uh, Infinite Warfare, which I think has a really good story, but the, the online is just kind of really bland and basic Call of Duty multiplayer. It's not going to be the same thing. So, that's at least what I think for the modes here. I've tried all of them, uh, and I think the best ones are, of course, Attrition and Bounty Hunt. That's just kind of the, the actual thing for it. The, uh, of course, then you just have your searching, you have Glitch 24-7, you can do private beta matches. Uh, the Coliseum, uh, I tried it once, and I got my ass handed to me. But, it's really kind of interesting how, you know, they basically put you 1v1, uh, you can't call on your Titan. They're, you know, it's basically just a one life, you versus somebody else. So it's basically just they wanted to kind of make it a skill versus skill kind of thing. Um, you have to either use a Coliseum ticket, which you can get uh, just by playing the game, but usually with um, with your upgrades to your Titans with uh, uh, Coliseum tickets, or you do a paid entry fee. Um, so that's actually really crazy. Um, luckily, um, it's not real world money. Uh, nothing in this game for the DLC required any money, except like if you if you want a Prime Titan, you can purchase it. You can purchase a a Prime Titan through uh, microtransactions. But the best thing we're, we're going to get that out here in a little bit. I just want to finish this. Uh, of course, my favorite mode is Frontier Defense. I fucking love Frontier Defense. I fucking love it. It's four-player co-op where you and three other buddies of yours, or just three random people online, go and uh, I might actually do a video. Maybe probably not tonight, um, but it'll end up being uh, probably later on, maybe during the weekend. Uh, if Professor Diehard and PT Monster and the Bob want to do it, we'd have actually a four-man squad. So that'd be pretty cool if we did that. Um, so Frontier Defense uh, basically involves you, it's basically a defend against waves of enemies, which I know to some people sounds incredibly boring. Um, but the maps are all different with the enemies that you encounter. They're all different with the locations of the Harvester and how to defend them. Uh, they can be defended the same ways though, when you basically get, the more rounds you go, the more money you earn, you spend that money to, go, to buy upgrades, heal your titans if they take any damage with ant batteries, you can buy turrets, you can even buy a shield for your harvester in case it takes damage, the shield goes down, you're about to lose it. The shield is actually really clutch, I remember almost losing multiple rounds of frontier defense until somebody pops a shield, and it basically can potentially save your, your ass for the round and lets you go into the next round. Um, the uh, downsides to Frontier Defense um, are people who drop. Um, basically, in any multiplayer mode, you can have teammates who drop, but in Frontier Defense, you get royally fucked by uh, people who drop. Because, at least in Attrition and Bounty Hunt, if, you're, if a teammate drops, you can still win the round. It's still possible for you to just dominate the other team. In Frontier Defense, 
it becomes almost impossible if it's two people or less than that if it's just you you are set up for failure you will not be you will not beat frontier defense it's impossible there's too many enemies at later on waves if a teammate drops on you so if you're watching this and you play frontier defense and you're one of the people that drops uh, go fuck yourself stay in the game you'll never improve any if you just keep leaving matches as soon as you feel like you're gonna lose a round because most people don't want to lose a round because it helps you upgrade your titan more just finish the game you get, you're gonna get your upgrades eventually just finish the game finish the fucking game that's all you gotta do don't, 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 be, a, don't be that guy don't be a dick finish the game uh, you know, take one for the team you got to um, and you know basically do that um, I might actually come out with a uh, frontier when I do a frontier defense kind of gameplay. I might do a, a kind of a helpful things that I've noticed whenever I've played frontier defense. Um, of course, there is the insane difficulty for frontier defense. They have it on a random map, I think, that could generate. This one's Blackwater Canal. Uh, hard and master and insane difficulties are just like it's fucking nuts. The enemy titans, the grunts. The stalkers, the ticks, the reapers, they are all doing like max damage to the harvester. You basically have to be on their ass the entire time. Like you you have to have like pretty much double dash equipped because you're not going to get in to anything fast enough. So you kind of have to replace overcore, which I think is a way better ability, with just the dashing because you have to get to enemies quicker. Um, so, but uh, uh, yeah, so that's basically just the game modes. Now, of course, uh, just like most of the other uh, first-person shooters nowadays, and uh, just a lot of the online games in general, you get to customize your pilot. You have uh, different uh, pilot loadouts. You can do a cloaking, which will basically uh, uh, get you out of some sticky situations. Uh, Pulse Blade, which is really cool. I actually think the helmet for Pulse Blade is probably the sickest one, besides the Hall Pilot. Hall Pilot is the sickest thing to me. Uh, a wall, basically just a shield, uh, use it for mainly defense, um, but then face shift is really good as well. Stim, people just think it just used to ram this ability up everyone's ass because it's so good. Uh, grapple, you're basically Spider-Man. Um, you pretty much essentially just don't have anywhere you can't go. Um, it's really useful that way. But and then of course uh, weapons, there are weapons, you have an anti-titan weapon, you have your regular weapons, and then of course your sidearm. Uh, I'm actually going to change my sidearm over here because I did not definitely didn't mean to uh, pick that bullshit, but we're doing that. And of course, you know, different uh, skins for your pistols and everything. Of course, you can do this with the in-game currency if you like a color that you like, and if you don't have it unlocked yet, of course you can buy it with the in-game currency. You don't have to spend real money on this. Um, it actually doesn't even give you the option to spend real world money on this, which is amazing to me. Um, you literally have to earn everything in the game. Of course, you have your uh, perks and uh, executions for pilots down here. Grand Theft Semi Auto, if you haven't seen that, go look on YouTube and stuff. It's amazing. Um, so, of course, you can uh, customize your Titans. So, uh,. Like, let's just say, let's just take Monarch, for example. Uh, you can do, uh, you know, whatever execution you want uh, using different customizable uh, things here, making your Titan look pretty sick, however you want it to look. You can customize the, uh, kind of the paint on the Titan, too, uh, which is pretty dope, I think. So you just give it a little bit more flavor. And then, of course, you can actually customize the camo for your gun, of course. And then, of course, if they have upgrades for their core or different kits of the Titans, you can do that as well. So, uh, boosts are really used for multiplayer. Um, of course, uh, um, if you're playing Attrition, there's no reason not to have something like Battery Backup, which gives you a shields for your Titan, which your Titan doesn't start off with that um, in a multiplayer. They only start off with just their health. So this gives you a shield, essentially, um, which is really good <laughs> um, to get out of really bad situations where you feel like you're not going to survive against another titan it's really good of course you have uh factions that you can choose from uh my hey, favorite of course is, 
is Barker because he's voiced by Liam O'Brien, uh, one of my favorite voice actors. Now, uh, of course, doing your call signs, if your call signs back, we got to have that eagle because we're from America. Uh, if we're really from America, we just pick the missile. Uh, <laughs> kidding. Um, but uh, then, of course, you have uh, call sign banners, uh, things that uh, you can view or your, your profile is viewing. You also have stats, so you can choose, uh, you know, just looking at your kill history or what you have for the next unlock. Um, really cool stuff like that. Um, you can also look at it for your titans. So, like, of course, like, my boys Ion and uh, Monarch are pretty good. I actually have the primes for these titans, but well, let's be real. Uh, you know, we, we are, are Ion looking, uh, this, this is a regular Ion. And he's looking pretty sick. Um, you, you know, looking like a Spec Ops Titan. Um, <laughs> but, um, so you still have that. Uh, maps tells you your history on maps. Um, and this will give you actually total distance traveled, all that uh, sort of neat stuff. You just want to track your stuff uh, that you've been doing throughout the game all the time. Uh, of course, and then uh, usually for networks, you'll have your inbox. So this is where you get advocate gifts, which is basically what happens once you level up or once your titan levels up. You get these uh, advocate gifts that will basically give you kind of a random assortment of like skins and stuff, or your not skins, but um, your camouflage for your titan or pilot, and which is super neat. Um, and again, that this doesn't cost anything. There's no option to pay money to get an advocate gift which I think is absolutely amazing the game basically wants you to play the game <laughs> like that I know I know it sounds completely trivial and completely strange now nowadays it just sounds completely foreign but I think the guys at respawn have done something super amazing it's fantastic um, and which has got me kind of excited and worried for if they ever do a Titanfall 3. Um, I think if they do Titanfall 3, it's definitely going to be on next gen. They're not going to do anything for the PS4. Um, they're just not. They're not going to. Uh, PS5 in the Xbox Next or whatever it is. Whatever the Xbox is called. Um, they're going to release Titanfall 3 probably on next gen. And it's not going to be until the next gen has kind of worked out whatever bugs they have on it or whatever respawn's going to wait until the hardware is finished and or the software and once I think that's kind of been perfected and they they see that you know the next gen is kind of picking up then I think EA is going to push the guys to kind of you know they're, they're going to say hey Apex is great but where's Titanfall 3 and the guys at respawn are probably going to say hey you didn't give us any money to make Titanfall 3 and they're going to be like, okay, we're EA, we're going to throw everything at you to make this game good. So, and I, the guys at Respawn haven't disappointed. Their gameplay has always been fantastic. Titanfall is an extremely addicting and, ex and very explorative universe and uh, I mean, I can't, you know, if Titanfall 3 gets announced and you know, there's no kind of tomfoolery with the DLC, and they still have a single player that you can experience that's, you know, just as good or better than Titanfall 2's, and they give you a little bit more customization for your Titans and the pilots, then you have the recipe for potentially the greatest um, first-person shooter that we've probably ever seen since Combat Evolved Halo. Um, I would argue probably since Halo 2 or Halo 3. That, and, and to a certain extent might might surpass it. But they would have... I mean, the marketing for Titanfall 2 wasn't very good. They released it between Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty Infinite Advanced Warfare. And the game just didn't sell when they put it up against two of the biggest first-person shooters that were releasing that year which is why the game didn't sell as well as that even though this game is I think without a doubt way better than those two games um, not saying Battlefield 1 is bad Battlefield 1 is a very good game is it is it has a single player uh, kind of limited single player compared to Titanfall 2 even but it still has a single player. 
online is very good. Um, and of course, it's World War One, a war that's not very kind of delved into in modern society. So, um, but I think you're kind of seeing a resurgence of it, especially with Battlefield One, the release of the movie 1917, one of the best movies I've ever seen, uh, war movies. And uh, Christopher Nolan did it because he's, you know, it's Christopher Nolan. He's he's the goat, uh, pretty much of, I, I think probably the greatest living director of our generation. Um, but the game itself is just fantastic. It's one of the best first-person shooters I've ever played. It's extremely addicting. It's fun to play with your buds. You know, if you got if you got a group of four, you got a, you know you and three other buddies that are just not talking to the mic. You guys want to play Titanfall too? Jump into online. Jump into Frontier Defense. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's just a recipe for fun. And unfortunately, a lot of games don't live up to the hype anymore. And Titanfall 2 is a game that the developers listened to the fans and you know gave them what they wanted and the hype was was satisfied and then raised so Titanfall 3 is you know definitely has a high bar set for it but I think Respawn is just like kinda like CD Projekt Red as far as first person shooters they can see the bar and then they can raise it themselves because it's the same guys again who basically made the first person shooter genre in you know really 2008 to you know 2000 I would say the 2010s was really the reason why a lot of people started to get back into the first person shooter. These guys again worked on Modern Warfare, they worked on the first and second Titanfall, they worked on Apex Legends. So I mean these guys know what they're doing and they're really good at it. Um, actually, correction, they're fantastic at it. <laughs> you know, the, it's, not, it's not like they're just real, okay, they're, they're good at it. They're fantastic at it. And uh, you know, this game I feel like proves that once again, you know, even if you're not a big fan of first person shooters, it's, I feel like, you know, anybody can get something out of this game. If you really just want to play with your friends and not have to worry about the competitive aspect of this game, Frontier Defense is literally calling your name. And you can do it on different difficulties once your Titan is leveled up to a certain rank. You can try the harder difficulties and see, you know, what your skill level's at, how you can improve, you know, wh what, you know, what thing is, is, you know, holding you back to get the next level, you know. And of course, if you like the competitive aspect, you know, dive right into online. I mean, pick, pick your top tier t titans and weapons and just go crazy. That's what this game, again, it gives you the freedom to choose, which is, I think, an essential part of any game to making it fun. Give the player a choice on how they want to maneuver, how they want to play, what how how they can play. What is you know what are the dynamics to that? And I feel like if there's a certain dynamic to any game like that, and I've done this with other reviews that I've done with me and Presser Die Hard on his channel, you should go check out. Um, we actually just had a good conversation with uh, PT Monster while we were all at Die's place where he lives. I was there last weekend, and we just basically had one of the couch conversations, what we're calling the series, whenever we do this new kind of stuff. We talk about video game news and stuff, and I wish we actually probably should, we probably should have talked about Titanfall, and how much fun we were having with that recently, in that, that couch conversation. Um, we should, I'll probably make a note, at least once we do have that, to actually go back and do it. But again, the game's amazing. My rating for the game. So, what do I think about the actual, you know, kind of uh, ranking for first-person shooter? I'm not very tempted to do a kind of out of 10 score because I don't feel like, I mean, if I did an out of 10 score, it'd be a 10 out of 10 for me. I would fucking love this game. I love Titanfall 2. It's it's one of my favorite first-person shooters, and I don't really... I think I got away from the first-person shooter genre for a long time and just play fighting games. Titanfall 2, I feel like, is one of the, the only game that's been able to really pull me back into the genre. Besides, maybe, you know, I occasionally go back and play Modern Warfare or Modern Warfare 2. 
but I won't play the online. I'll play the story. I, I, I basically will go back every now and then and replay the story mode because the story mode is so good. It's just the same thing with Titanfall 2. I'll go back and replay the story mode because the story mode is actually really damn fun. It's engaging. Uh, I'll play the multiplayer when I feel like it. Um, you know, if I'm not, you know, grinding it out on Dragon Ball Fighters or playing Tekken or playing even RPGs, if I'm not playing Kingdom Hearts on the channel, there's just times where I'll get bored and I'll be like, man, cut this shit out. I'll play some Titanfall 2. And, it, and the best thing about it, though, is that, you know, if you can have a busy day, you're not really, uh, you're not really feeling up to par with, you know, going into an RPG or going into a fighting game or, you know, just, you know, you want to escape the frustration of the day. Honestly, th this game is where it's at. It, it is. It gives you really quick, fast fun and uh, puts you in a match very quickly, too. I mean, as you can see, while, we, while I've been sitting here on the screen, I mean, there have been, there have been invites and matches that have been going on the entire time of this video. So, it's, you know, and the servers still work. Great. Um, I've only had a little bit of lag issues um, with the online. That's probably just because I don't have an Ethernet cable, which I will be investing in very soon. Because I, I definitely need that bullshit. Uh, I, I, I'm going to have to get one just to improve my, my overall internet speed. I have great internet. I just need to actually plug it up to the damn PS4 and make it run super smooth. Um, once once it does that, I will probably not run into very many lag issues anymore. Um, so, but um, so my rating for you know I think it'd be if I did it out of ten, it'd be a ten out of ten. As far as like a maybe an F to an A rank, uh, I would say this is probably like for me this is S tier. <laughs> yeah, this I would go the fighting game tier. So this is S tier. Titanfall 2 is S tier. You know, like, the game's so fun. And even the people who play it with you are actually really fun, too. I've run into some funny motherfuckers on this game. People just, like, either... Whether it's somebody just being a dick and yelling into the mic, or somebody that's actually on, like, what I might play tonight after I get off of this video, playing Frontier Defense, you know, you might have somebody that's like, hey, you know, hey, they're approaching the Harvester, go there. Like, somebody's, like, really trying to help you guys out. And uh, the best thing about Frontier Defense, I think, versus the the multiplayer, is that Frontier Defense actually feels like you have to work with other people, versus you just going into a multiplayer match and just gunning down everybody and you having 30 kills while the guy below you has like two, and he dies like 26 times. You know, like it's you know it makes you actually feel like you, especially if you have competent people playing with you in Frontier Defense. Uh, the games can go by really quick if you guys know what you're doing. Uh, I think one of the Frontier Defense matches I did uh, a couple of days ago, I feel like it was the fastest one I've ever done. And not even with like Die and PT and Bob that I was able to actually like finish a game that fast. I think I finished it maybe 20 minutes. The matches I think in Frontier Defense usually take about 25, 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how many times like if your Harvester dies, you have to respawn. I think we finished it in 20 minutes. It was it was godlike. Um, we were just like all my shots were hitting. Uh, I was playing Ion, and everything just seemed to be connecting. I wasn't really my Titan wasn't going down very often. And we, I was playing I think on regular or hard. That one might have actually, I might have actually been on hard mode. Yeah. Oh no 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 it was regular it was regular. Um, but still. Uh, the game's fantastic. If you haven't picked it up already, uh, and if you're thinking about it, I'm pretty sure this is like nine dollars on on the uh, on the PlayStation Network or the PlayStation Store. I'm pretty sure this game is nine dollars, which is ridiculous. But it's nine bucks. Pick the fucking game up. Uh, have even if you don't want to play it now, just have it in your library. If you want to play it later, just go. Hey, you know, I feel like re-downloading this game. Uh, it's gonna take a little while to download if you don't if you don't have fast internet. It's gonna take a little bit. Um, the the gigabyte storage for it I think is not too much. I think it's maybe 50, 50 gigs, um, which is nothing compared to Battlefront 2's like a hundred and like in 10 or 120 gigabyte storage. That's just oh, it's it's actually criminal. Um, 
the, the way that's set up, but yeah, it's 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 ridiculous. But um, I have we uh, I used to post uh, some Battle Battlefront Two stuff, and this is kind of taking the place of Battlefront Two. It's so much more fun. It's more rewarding. I don't feel like I'm getting cheesed, you know. I feel like there's actually things I could do to prevent myself from being cheesed in the game, which is fantastic. Um, it's you know it's awesome. Battlefront 2 is just cheese central. This game is like, oh you're getting fucked. Well, good thing the developers actually came up with a way for you to get unfucked. You know, they didn't leave you just out here to fucking dry. You know, in this game. So that's what I do like about it. It's really cool. Um, pick up the game if you haven't. If you're lucky enough like me to download it when it was on PS Now then props to you, you probably fucking played it, you probably fucking enjoyed it too. I don't think I've come across, like, one person online that's just been like, oh wow, this game, this game actually fucking blows. I, I don't think I've actually seen a person who's just like, man, this game absolutely sucks. Like, even people who, like, maybe will bash on it for certain things will be like, oh yeah, dude, you know, they improved on certain areas. Okay. It's an improvement. Gotcha. So, uh, the game just, you know, s smells of high praise and, and as it should. Um, even EA, the, the people who, you know, the company that has not had a good time with the consumers lately, in 2016, they got with no microtransactions. If you sit like I did on the screen for too long, but. Um, but, um, really just uh, do a review on this. I don't know why I haven't done a review on this game, but I've been playing it for like the past month, or really two months, or actually probably longer than that. I think it was on P PS Now in December, and I downloaded it then, and we've been playing it pretty much ever since the start of the new year. Um, really engaging really good campaigns right there for you uh, again I'm not gonna spoil anything on the campaign you just gotta play it it's fantastic uh, my favorite mission I have to say is the uh, let's see what the name of it's called trial by fire is a great fucking mission it's it's all Titan based it's basically the, the game the game wants you to stay in the Titan and like fight you have basically waves of Titans as you're making your way to the to a ship it's a it's it's basically D-Day for mechs. That's what I compare it to. Yeah, it's 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 D-Day for mechs. You start off kind of like on the beachhead, and you have to work your way into kind of the crevices and, and the bunkers on near the ships and everything. It's it's I think it's I actually like that mission more than I do Affecting Cause, but Affecting Cause is definitely the more interesting mission. Uh, I think most people would agree on that. Um, another mission that's really good was uh, the Ark. It's a really fan, uh, really fun mission. Uh, and then, of course, the last mission is uh, also really fun as well. It's uh, fantastic too. So, um, but with that being said, um, oh gosh, what's happening here? Retrieve my matchmaking list, you motherfucker. Um, but uh, I just wanted to do uh, a review for uh, this and really just kind of get it out there. Uh, listen to that score, too. I don't know who does the uh, music for this game. But it, it, yeah, but the score is actually very good. Uh, the composer, I need to look up his name because he actually does a really good job uh, on this game, too. So, making it kind of that epic score where it's you know, the more the choir esque thing than. Let's say maybe Halo 2 that has like the Steve Vai guitar, which is fucking amazing. Honestly, they got Steve Vai to do it. But, um, but that's all for the uh, review, guys. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you wouldn't mind, leave, like, comment, subscribe, hit the motherfucking subscribe button. This is Aries from Aries Game Productions, and I am signing off for the night. I will see you guys later feel free to join the Aries Nation too uh, if uh, ever a point where uh, we get you know me and Dimes Channel gets big enough where we can have people try to join the games I think that'd be awesome especially on this game uh, if we're not already playing Titanfall 3 by then but if we are be fine too 
Uh, but uh, yep, I will see you guys on the flip side. Deuces, peace, and hair grease.